Now, if you know me or you watch this channel, you'd see that I'd like to hoard, I mean collect, strange and obscure cameras. Now, anything from forgotten about sensors and philosophies of yesteryear to dusty ones that I'd find at, say, thrift stores, rummage sales, or even on eBay, all at a low cost. Now, today's camera is one that I find incredibly strange, but maybe not at first. Like at first you might see this camera and think, yeah, it's just a dad cam. Then you double take, is that a Sony Nex? And you even look closer than that. Wait, a Konica Minolta lens? So the dad cam falls right here. We can kind of do it, but we don't have to because we have a nice grip on this thing. Like the zoom on this thing is pretty crazy. I think it's like a 10 times. I mean, it's not FC300 by Panasonic crazy, but it's good. So we're just gonna sit at the top of anchor if you can't tell and zoom around and see if we can get some nice view. room. Like I really want a hot dog or glizzy grip this thing like a camcorder, but we don't have to because of the grip. And I have a lanyard, so obviously we can get more stable footage if we hold it out like this. Zoom. It's not like somewhat cold weather. It's 50 degrees here, and I didn't think that was cold enough for a camera like this, but it might be. So we're gonna have to take out the battery and warm her up. I had to, it's tradition, I'm already here. Let's just take a look at the body while we're sitting here waiting. So again, we have a steep grip like you'd find on an old Sony camera. The front end of it is just a camcorder, like a JVC Enviero, and everything just seems to be flattened to the back, right? But you have an articulating screen, so if you wanted to vlog, that's cool. You also have all of your ports, like micro HDMI, headphone jack, and it even has stereo audio built in. So you can just throw a sock on this and use that as your dead cat if you want it. Furthermore, you have a very useful zoom power at that like you find on a camcorder. So it has all the makings of what could be a very useful camera today, but I feel, in my opinion, that the specs of the time were nerfed from the start. And we'll talk about that when I'm back at my house. I feel like we are ready to cook again. Let's give it a go. Full battery, look at that. So as one could expect, I couldn't find much information on this camera online, but the cliff notes I found were that this JVC was known for two things in particular. It's long continuous shooting times and super slow motion. There's nothing around me, but when there is, you best believe we're gonna get it in super slow mode. I just want to mention a few things that they got right and a few they got wrong with this JVC PX10 here. Now, ergonomics. I know a lot of people dunked on them as I looked at the old reviews of this camera when it came out, I think 2011 or 2012. Not a lot of fans of this. I guess I could see why. It's like an Enviero got smashed into a Nex and they just kind of rolled with it. 
I like it. I think it's comfy to hold, and the button layout is very smart and thought out to me. It makes it easy to grip and change your buttons when needed, and again, I have sausage fingers, so ergonomics is important to a guy like me. The articulating screen is nice. Having the built-in stereo microphone with a 10 times zoom internally at that is beautiful. Furthermore, it has a big old beefy battery, which I think a lot of modern cameras should be sneaking their battery into the grip like this. I think it's smart. And it has all of your connections that you need for the most part, right? But a few things that could be better with this JVC camera. And now we can kind of start to see why this camera wasn't so popular or they didn't make a Mark II. Now, first notable mentions to me, I wish this camera was weather sealed even just a little bit because as we saw it, it's 50 degrees here and the camera just can't handle that, it dies. So just a little bit more rubber gaskets would be nice or would have been nice. A built-in ND filter would be clutch, but let me explain to you why it wouldn't matter with this camera anyways. Now for starters, manual controls there's really not any like i get it it's a camcorder and you could adjust your shutter speed yes but your iso is always auto which yes the 36 megabytes per second would come in handy for a easier grade in post-production but if you're grading auto iso what's the point like yes it's fine for static shots but once you start moving or getting dynamic then to me, your shot just looks amateur. So having the ability to control ISO would have just been a simple tweak that they could have done, and I don't think it would have costed any more extra money, and it would have helped propel the camera for years in the future. Furthermore, this camera is stuck at 50 frames per second. Like, you can't go full HD 24p. Why? I don't need everything slow motion or soap opera looking. I'd like to shoot in 24 frames per second. If it had those two things, I would still consider this as an awesome camera today. I don't mind full HD footage. I do when it's all auto and stuck at 50 frames per second. Now, part of me thought that they would have held out on those professional features for uh, a Big Brother model of this camera, which they kind of have with the PX100, but it looks to me like that one's also stuck at 50 frames per second. So I don't know what JVC was thinking. Like, no one's ever going to shoot at 24p in the future or I guess four or three ratios. I don't know who would do that. But yeah, that was just a short video, I hope, on the JVC camera that I found for $20. It just caught me off guard, both the look and the fact that it's rocking a Minolta brand lens. I just felt like I couldn't pass up the deal. I feel like I would still be intrigued with this camera at a $100 to $150 price point, especially if I'm doing things out in the field like recording golf which mind you this camera that i have came with some free dlc i.e the previous owner playing golf watch this wasn't that cool watch it again i always love when my used gear comes with freebies also a cool thing that this camera has at this at the beginning what no you don't pay me enough for that shut up is built in memory so i can just use it as is and it's nice to have the ability to record for long periods of time without having to worry about my camera but worrying about weather that is a different story that's it i just wanted to showcase this weird little camera that i purchased for way too cheap on today's market thank you for watching sub to the channel find me on instagram at matt's notes and i will talk to you again soon